Hello, Clean Fiction community. This is Amy Lynn McConaughey here with Clean Fiction Audio. We are trying something new this week and for some weeks in the future uh, of putting out a video with me reading the reviews that have audiobooks in one of our editions. This week we are reading reviews from our spring edition 2023 and it will be from the fantasy section. We're going to see how this does and for me it takes a lot less time to just talk to a camera than it does to edit a video. So here we go, warts and all, no making comments on if I make any mistakes. Some of the words in these fantasy books are a little bit difficult to pronounce, so just be kind. Thanks. Okay, our first review is Beast of the Night by E.E. E. Rawls. A one-armed practical girl, a rude lord hiding a curse, a dark secret with the town's fate hanging in the balance. When Rosen moves to Frudendorf, a secluded town in the Alps with her dad, he vanishes on her and the debt collectors come to call, taking her into slave labor. As if that wasn't bad enough, just when all her hopes and dreams for a normal life are ruined, a frail zombie-like butler purchases her, taking her to serve Lord Vavrick, who currently resides in the Forbidden Castle near the Salt Mines, where the Beast of the Night is set to roam. Vavrick is handsome, with an attitude that's the exact opposite. The servants aren't human, and the castle itself is an ugly wreck. But if Rosen cannot solve the dark secret spreading beneath Frudendorf, the curse holding Vavrick's cold heart, then both they and the town will fall prey to awaiting evil, and worse, lose their memory of it. A Beauty and the Beast retelling with an Austrian twist and a new breed of curse. This book's genre is fairy tales and folklore adaptations, and it is available wherever books are sold. Now, for the review by Kelly Barr, her information can be found in the description of the video. Beast of the Night is a fantasy and fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast. It is a standalone, though it is part of E.E. E. Rawls' Altered Verse series. All the books in the series can be read in any order. The setting for Beast of the Night is a fictional town in the Austrian Alps, loosely modeled after Salzburg, which has salt mines, and salt mines play a prominent role in this story. Since Beauty and the Beast is my favorite fairy tale, I'm always up for a reading, for reading a retelling version of it. And Beast of the Night did not disappoint me. I found the story to be very unique, as it has some in very interesting twists that start right at the beginning. I love that both the beauty and the beast in this tale have some unusual physical characteristics that they that may give the reader pause as they at first try to determine which of the two main characters represents beauty and which represents beast. The curse doesn't affect just one character in this story, it affects the entire town the story is set in. Rosenrot, who is fairly new to this town, cannot help herself when faced with a mystery. She is compelled to try to solve it. But can she solve the mystery of Frudendorf and the mystery of the curse upon Lord Vavrick before they all perish? Beast of the Night includes a very unique and interesting cast of characters, most of which are not humans. As Lord Vavrick learns that it means to, what it means to have a friend, and Rosenrot attempts to solve the mysteries. E.E. E. Rawls keeps the reader turning pages with her unexpected twists. There is magic and a warlock in this story. The dark magic is fairly light on the darkness, and Rosenrot is a character who treats others with kindness and respect, and sets that example for those she spends most of her time with. She brings light into the story. I found Beast of the Night to be a delightful story. And of course, I cheered Rosenrot on from the beginning to the end. This story is an easy read. And as I mentioned, it is not dark, nor does it include graphic violence or adult themes. I recommend this book to young adults through adults. There is no clear religion in this story. Based on the magic and a couple scenes of with golems, 
I give Beast of the Night by E.E. E. Rawls a clean fiction rating of A. Showing some ankle, a perfect book for the Puritan in your life. The contact information for E.E. E. Rawls is in the description of the video as well. And let me show you a picture of the cover. There's the cover. All right. That was Beast of the Night by E.E. E. Rawls. Now, let us move on to Resistance by J.L. Knight. Knight spelled like a knight of the round table. Let's see here. Don't you know, animals like you have no soul. Could God ever love a half-blood? All of the society looks upon with such fear and disdain. Jace once believed so, but when a tragic loss shatters the only peace he's ever known, his faith crumbles and the nagging doubts he's tried to put behind him descend on his grieving heart. With them come the haunting memories of the blood-stained past he longs to forget, but can never escape. Taken from home at a young age and raised to serve the emperor, Kieran Altar, Altair, Kieran Altair, lives every day under a dangerous pretense of loyalty. After her unique observation skills and perfect memory place her into direct service to the emperor, Kieran herself <clears throat> finds herself in further jeopardy as it becomes increasingly difficult to hide her belief in Elom, Elom, the one true god. Following the Emperor's declaration to enforce the worship of false gods under the penalty of death, many lives are endangered. But there are those willing to risk everything to take a stand and offer aid to the pursuit, per, to the persecuted. With their lives traveling paths they never could have imagined, Jace and Kieran must fight to overcome their own fears and conflicts with society as they become part of of the resistance. This book's genre is Christian fantasy and it is available on Amazon as an audiobook and I do believe that is the only place it is available as an audiobook. Yes, that is correct. This review is by Alexan uh, Alexandria Frederick. She just got married, so it used to be Alexandria Miracola, now it is Alexandria Frederick. Let me continue. Resistance is a powerful beginning to the Leon Chronicles. The world that readers are welcomed into instantly feels rich in its history and vivid in its struggles. Followers of Elom, the one true God, are facing persecution from the Emperor, and Kieran and Caden Altair find themselves at the very heart of the resistance. The themes of persecution and discrimination are dealt with powerfully, and the high stakes and intrigue made it difficult to put this book down. Action. The characters face increasing danger as they are called to either stay true to Elom or bow to the emperor's demand that his gods be worshipped. There are some scenes that involve imprisonment, torture, and execution. Only some of these scenes are slightly more descriptive. For the most part, the author communicates what is happening without going into graphic detail. Adventure. From evading capture at the hands of the emperor's soldiers and navigating political intrigue to helping Elom's followers flee persecution while being brave enough to face it themselves, the characters encounter adventure on every page. This is a book that draws your heart close to each character and leaves you desperate to discover what their fate will be by the story's end. Romance. Some mild flirtation occurs in this book, and there is a brief allusion to a courtship between two characters. But aside from that, this story is romance-free. Religion. Faith is at the core of the entire tale. Followers of Elom must either keep their faith a secret or risk persecution and death by refusing to follow the emperor's polytheistic religion. While Christianity is not specifically mentioned, this is a Christian fantasy series, and faith in Elom is meant to represent the Christian faith. Final thoughts. 
Resistance is the kind of story that makes readers impossibly grateful that there are more books to look forward to. The story is an invitation to get to know each of these characters. Kieran, Caden, Jace, and so many others as dear friends as they experience the same joy and grief we do. But the story is also a rallying cry to stand firm in our faith as courageously as they do. We need more stories like this one, and I can't wait to read the next book. This book is rated B. This is the full blush, people. If you are prone to fainting, you will need a fan. Information about J.L. Knight is in the video description. Next, we have a review of, of Gold and Iron of Dreams and Nightmares, book one, by Nikki Chapelway. Swear on something else. Swear on your humanity. I suddenly find it very hard to swallow my humanity. With a jolt, I realize that there are far greater things at risk here than just my life. I'm in the fairy world. Anything could happen, even immortality. The other world is the home of the fairies, deceitful, decadent, and deadly. As the next in line to become guardians, Jay and her brother Thomas are tasked with defending the human world from all things magical. But when a routine scouting mission ends with them trapped in the other world, it becomes painfully clear that someone doesn't want them to leave the world of the fairies. Determined to not become an immortal's pawn, Jay kidnaps Raven Crow, an arrogant solitary fairy, so that he can guide them safely home. But things quickly go from bad to worse when they are captured by the Winter Court and embroiled in a plot to start a fairy civil war. Thomas is enslaved by an unseely fairy, and it seems that the only way to save her brother and avoid a war is for Jay to ally herself with Raven. The fairies are governed by a set of strict laws. For their own safety, the guardians have their own rules. But with Thomas's life hanging in the balance, there's only one way to save him that does not include breaking the fairies' fair law, a crime that ends in death. Together, Jay and Raven must complete a series of deadly tests given by the fairy courts in order to earn Jay the right to be named the fair assassin and wield the blade of gold and iron. As the fair assassin, she will be permitted to kill any fairy she so chooses, but first she has to live long enough. Walking a fine line between destruction and further entanglement with Crow, Jay is going to have to break her own rules if she wants to win. She must trust a fairy. Her life and humanity depend on it. The genre of this book is clean romance and fairy tale fantasy. And it is available as an audiobook on Amazon. Now for the review by Brianna Wilkie. Her information can be found in the description of the video. Action. There is some action, mostly of the violent variety. Fairies get stabbed. There's a mention of them tearing themselves apart due to ensorcelment. There's blood, but there, but it isn't too graphically described. Other injuries occur, but I can't say much more without spoiling anything. And what would be the fun of that? Adventure. There's a lot of adventure to be found within the pages of this book. In order to save her brother and make it back to the real world, Jay has to complete tasks in each of the Fey courts in order to become the fair assassin. Why she needs to be an assassin in the first place would be revealing too much. Trust me, this book is so good that it wouldn't be fair of me to spoil anything for you. Magic. Where there are fairies, there's also magic, including manipulation, ice powers, and the ability to sap the life force from humans who fall in love with them. Guardians like Thomas have a fey blessing and a curse. He has the ability to shapeshift into a werewolf. Jay has neither a blessing nor a curse. Fairies are for the most part immortal, they can be killed one of two ways, through the use of iron or an item of immortality. This reminds me of the Horcruxes from Harry Potter 
And the gifts given to the Guardian families remind me of the gifts given to the Madrigal family in Encanto. Fairies can also enter into blood bargains with each other and with humans. Don't worry, there's nothing gross or graphic about them. Romance. Romance is a complicated thing whenever fairies are involved. Human and fae romances don't usually go well, but that doesn't stop them from happening. Thomas falls for Aobian, which only leads to trouble. Iowerth flirts with Jay and tries to seduce her. Jay and Raven have an enemies to lovers thing going on. Their relationship is complicated and their sarcasm infused banter is glorious. There are a couple of swoony kisses shared between them. Elias and Regan had a past relationship of some kind, whether or not it's romantic, it isn't quite clear. Their relationship seems to be similar to the relationship that Jay and Raven have. There are a bunch of complicated romantic feelings to sort through, which should be enough to hold any romance fan's attention. Religion. While the author is a Christian, there is nothing explicitly Christian about this book. There is a brief history lesson on how the Fae ruled over Jay's ancestors as gods, small g. Jay prays several times throughout the book, though it seems to be in a general sense, since no god, real or imagined, is mentioned. This is a book that can be enjoyed by anyone, no matter their religion. Final thoughts. I love fairy stories. Unfortunately, many of them are unreadable to, due to explicit sexual content. Thankfully, that's not the case here. It's clean, it's fun, and full of romance without feeling like you are going to church to repent af <laughs> without feeling like you need to go to church to repent afterward. It's been a while since I read a fay romance this good. It's upper YA, which means that Jay is an older teen about to enter her senior year of high school. This book is perfect for younger and older readers alike. Perfect for fairy and fantasy lovers everywhere. My review of book two is on the next page, so don't read it unless you want spoilers for book one. And I will be reading that in the next video. This book is rated G. We'll make you gasp. Both eyebrows will be involved in reading this book. Information on Nikki Chapaway can be found in the video description. Also, if you want more information on the clean fiction levels of clean, you can visit our website, cleanfictionmagazine.com. You can also visit cleanfictionmagazine.com to become a yearly subscriber, either as a paperback subscriber or as an ebook subscriber. For just $10 a year, you can have all four of our quarterly editions and all our back editions on our website. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today, and I will see you next week.